right. If you had a an upstart company and you had a choice to pay money or possibly get one for free, would you make a phone call to get the one for free? I'd take the one for free. Okay. Well, this little dickhead don't know how to conduct business right, so I guess apparently he wasn't going to call me. I had to call him in order for him to use our ring for free. And instead of doing that, he paid... And instead of doing that, he paid probably... From what I understand, something around five hundred dollars. Three to five hundred to get a ring from the Tulsa guy. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. LJ, you wanna shed some light on this? Yeah. You know, anything you wanna say? Well, a few days back, I was talking to Mr. Keaton on Facebook, and uh, pretty much I tried to explain to him that if he had picked up the phone, he would have had a free ring. Right. But he said that, you know, it wasn't his place to, to call Kevin, that Kevin was supposed to call him. And because Kevin didn't call him, that he decided that he would go get a different ring. So what you're saying is he wasted his money, he wasted our time. And he pissed off a lot of talent in the process. Not only did he piss off a lot of talent, which, you know, 90% of his his roster for that show was either sewer guys or out-of-state wrestlers. Now, with with, uh, with him doing that, not only did he piss off the, the wrestlers, he pissed off a lot of fans because... He rescheduled. I forgot he rescheduled. He scheduled it, and in doing so, they drew 30 fans, which half of those was panel members from wrestling. So they, they drew about 15 fans that paid, and then the rest of it was all probably comp tickets. Yeah. So, so it was probably a waste of time and money. Call me old school, but... I'm going to say, say you have never worked at SWC, right? And if I wanted to book you on one of the shows, is it your place to call me to get the booking, or is it my place to call you? I would hope that if you wanted me to work for your show, you would be man enough to call me. And if anything, and I know you've been around, both of you have been around me enough, so if anything, if I'm going to talk to somebody, especially if I'm at work, I usually say, okay, Here's my info. Keep it. Give me a call at 5 o'clock. That's when I'm off work. Right. And then we'll conduct business, right? So, uh, why couldn't he call me? Seven digits, Peden. Seven digits. You don't even need an area code. We have cell phones now. Now, I want to bring up a topic. All right, what's up? Why... If you have a, a fed, why are you going to run a site for another fed that you had nothing to do with? That's a good question. The unofficial uh, sooner sooner deal is that still around? No, it's not. Why put yourself in charge of a company that you have nothing to do with? So, so you mean our attorneys got a hold of them? I looked into the matter and I it's been taken care of. Yo, I got a better question. Why'd you hit me with a fucking briefcase, asshole? I got an even better question. What the fuck did you do with that briefcase, asshole? Looks like Whitey, it just went missing. For those of you who don't know, Whitey is a world-famous steel chair that never had a single fucking dent in it. It's almost ten years old now, and it just went missing one day. We don't know where it is. Now, as for your question, why I hit you... Nothing personal, it's just business. Just business, my ass. Wasn't even part of the fucking storyline. Yeah, he tends to have, uh... I get a briefcase in my hand, <laughs> and... Briefcase, <laughs> hell, remember shaking the ropes? Asshole. <laughs> oh. Not to mention that it caught me off guard the second time, so then the damn padding slipped, and I crouched myself. That was funny. Time out. Speaking of assholes, I have to ask a question to Kevin. Tell me the story about the crossface. 
Wow. <laughs> Young David Kaiser. Oh, him and uh, <laughs> him and your very handsome brother there, Christopher Groves, teamed up against myself and Shane in the little infamous crossface fart spot. <laughs> so Crow's going for the F5. He goes to his little flippy de doo thing, and I hook his arm, go down. And apparently by video, and don't watch it by the way, but I did not have the arm hooked, actually hooked. <laughs> so he's like roaming free. He could have like followed my nutsack right there. And I felt the little gas bubble building up. <laughs> so I was like, dude, I have got to tag Sean. Shane, Shane, Shane. What's his name? Doesn't matter. Shane, Sean, something like that. And he's like, why? And I'm like, I just ripped ass. <laughs> so I jumped up and I tagged Sean. <laughs> as soon as I step out, your brother had the biggest grin on his face, and he just yells out, and I'm surprised everybody didn't hear him, and yells out, you fucking ass! You just shit, and I smell it! What the fuck? And then Sean walks in, and Sean proceeds to, what the hell is that? And again, loudly, your brother said, that motherfucker farted! <laughs> Good times, uh, good times. Good times.